Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in programming the finite element method using MATLAB. Now in this video I am going to continue my efforts on the load front by talking about something called nodal loads. Today we are going to program what it means to be a nodal load and how we can apply it to different nodes. Now of course I want to mention that if you are new to this video series then please notice that this is a part of the finite element method video series which I will be linking on the top right and furthermore, it is a video series in its own right about programming, which I will also link in the top right. Now, of course, I want to mention that the source code is readily available to all my dear channel members. However, if you are not a channel member or a regular viewer, then don't worry, because every single line of code that I'm writing is going to be written in front of you. I'm not going to hide any code. So if you write along with me, then you will have the same code as me. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive into the world of STR loads. And with that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, now we need to dive into the world of STR nodal loads. And before I start with anything, I need to explain to you the paradigm that I'm following to apply STR nodal loads. Now, what I will be doing is I would have an object called STR nodal load. The purpose of this object is to store the nodal load values, meaning the force on x, and y, and z, moment x, moment y, moment z. This nodal load is not going to be a part of the nodes, meaning it's not going to be a property of the node, because the node is not what has a load. Because remember, if you want to consider the nodal loads, for example, here, to be a part of the node, then the relationship is has. Now the STR node doesn't have another load. No, the node load is applied on the STR node. You could disagree and you could include the node load as a property of the STR node. I'm not gonna do this. I've tried this a million times in C sharp, and there are massive, massive, massive complications when I want to delete the STR node later, because if I want to delete it, then I, must, then I must cycle through every single node, which sometimes can be in the 10,000s, and then I would cycle through every single node and check if the nodal load was defined there or not, and I would delete it from the property. This is a too high task and too steep calculation effort, so I'm not going to opt for that. However, what I'm going to opt for is something similar to Autodesk robot. And I'm gonna show this to you very quickly. So this is Autodesk robot. Now this is a software that costs thousands of dollars, by the way. And let's take a look how this software deals with loads just to get an idea and a reference of why am I approaching the loads in such a paradigm. So let's just load and show you how it deals with loads. If you go to loads load table in Autodesk robot, you can see how the loads are defined. Every single load object has a list of members where it's applied on, which means the members don't know that the load is applied on them, but the load knows that it is going to be applied on the member. So when the calculation analysis happens, there is a step where I'm going to apply all the loads on their respective elements. This might cost a little bit of an extra during the calculation, but its maintenance is easier uh, when compared to a paradigm or a programming paradigm where the node owns the load. So that's the approach I'm going to follow for this. Now, before I continue, a quick apology. I know that Autodesk Robot's window is kind of bright, so I might have caused you some discomfort. I'm very sorry about that because you're used to dark mode, right? Anyway, let's continue. So I'm not gonna touch the nodes or the lines for the nodes. I'm going to develop the loads independent of those elements. So I'll close the line, I'll close the node, and now I want to define the load. So I click on this plus button, I'll save and call it str nodal load. That's a class now. So I'm gonna class dev it, I'm gonna say str nodal load, and end the class dev. Now this nodal load has properties. So I will define the properties of that thing, and I'm gonna define the methods of that thing. Now, the properties are things that an object has and the methods are things that an object can do. Let's talk about the properties here. First of all, I need an ID for this. I need the name for this. 
I need the fx value, the fi, y value, the fz, mx, my, and mz. And by the way, I am actually taking a page out of robot because those are the elements that you can see in Autodesk Robot. I'm kind of getting inspiration by Autodesk Robot. But there is something else I need to apply here because you see the str nodal load doesn't have the nodes, but it knows. I want to remind you the relationship between the str nodal load and the node. The node doesn't have an str nodal load, so it's not a property of the node. Also, the str nodal load doesn't have or own a node. What the str nodal load has is an applied to list. This is a list of nodes that the str nodal load is going to, uh, to be applied to. Later along the series, we are going to ask the controller to check out the list of each of the individual loads and then apply it to the str nodes. And this is something the controller will do. This will decrease the complexity of maintaining the software. And when you want to delete a nodal load, then the only thing you have to do is to remove the number from the list. And if you want to delete a node, then it doesn't matter. Because when the controller wants to apply the node and node, it will search the nodes, and if it doesn't find it, it will just ignore it. So nothing will break in the logic and the sequence. Okay, so for the properties now, I think I'm done. Am I done? I could make it more fancy, because there are, those are assumed in the global coordinate system. I could, for example, give it an alpha, beta, gamma rotation, or Gaussian angles, to kind of allow you to apply a node and load at an angle. However, I'm not going to do this. You can calculate it via cosine and sine yourself, or you can expand it later if you want. For the methods, I'm going to define a constructor. So function str nodal load is going to take in, oh wait, I forgot to write object. It will take in the ID and everything else. The name fx, fy, fz, mx, my, and mz. It is not going to take the apply to because at the time of definition of the nodal load, we don't know upon what it is being applied. I'm going to basically define the object. I'm going to basically fill in the stuff of the object. So object.id equals the ID, object.name equals the name, and so on. You know the drill. Now here I wrote this zero explicitly, but in reality, I don't need to do this because by default, the applied to is going to be empty and don't need to empty it itself. Finally, I'm going to define the reporting function to string, and here, I don't know how I'm going to report it. I want it to be simplified. I have so many things I need to report, but I want to have it simplified. So how can I do that? Should I report all the forces? Maybe I should give all the forces. Let's try. F print F nodal load. I don't know, do I need a name for a nodal load? I don't think a name is appropriate, right? Let's not have a name for it. Like nobody, nobody takes a name for a nodal load. So now for the nodal load here, I'm going to give it an ID, so ID, or I, and I'm going to give it some values, so, so let's make it line by line. Dash enter, yeah, this is much, much neater. Now I'm going to basically copy this and paste it and give here, for example, fx equals, and then just give a value here. And of course, the value must be filled, so object dot fx, and now I can copy paste. Of course, I need an enter key here. And now I can copy paste, basically. So let's copy this, paste it five times, one, two, three, four, five. There is an error here. Oh, I forgot to give the ID. So object.id. And here I'm going to put fy, fz, mx, my, mz. Also here, fy, fz, mx, and my, and mz. Fantastic. So yeah, I think, I think this is how a uh, node load is supposed to look like. I don't need a name for it, so let's delete this very quickly. And let's see if it works or not. So I'll go to main, and now I will define the code, the, the load myself. So I'll go here, say node load one equals controller dot add str node load. And, oh, I don't have it in the controller, not yet. This is for next video. So add str uh, I mean, str nodal load, and let's give it an ID, negative one, fx 1000, fy 0, fz 1000, 
and x0 and y0 and z1000. Just try something, okay? And let's see how it looks like in the reporting system if I want to say to string and see what happens. So f5, um, let's take a look in the beginning. You can see another node minus one, thousand, thousand, zero, zero, thousand. Yeah, I think this is fine. I think what I forgot to mention is I need to show the apply to, right? So I just go to my node load here and f print f and say here applied to and now give a bunch of values that is applied to. So dash i and give it the object dot applied to. And let's see how it looks in it works. So I put here enter key, of course, and then F5 and see what happens. So run or F5. And let's see how the reporting system looks. Applied to nothing, of course, because nothing has been applied to. You know what? Let's, let's change this by hacking it, basically. So um, know the load. Now you should, we are supposed to never access those things like this. We are supposed to ask the controller to do that. But now I will just do it by hand. So I don't know, one, two, three. Let's just try and see what happens if we do this. Let's run and see how it looks. Ah, it doesn't really look nice. I'll take it. Maybe I will modify it later and improve it, but for now, I will take it. So yeah, I think we reached the new benchmark. We have defined what it means to be an str node load. And I think we have arrived at the objective. We have achieved our objective for today. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. And in the end, I want to give a nodal load size shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.